Shocker. Alert. Trump orders immediate and full withdrawal of U.S. troops from Syria. Really? Wow. Well, it is a shock, considering that this was posted today along with this posted today. Islamic State kills 700 in Terra Har. 5,000 jihadists hold up in Syria. UN weighs in. They firmly condemned the extremist group's indiscriminate and widespread campaign of violence, which it says may amount to war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. Well, Donald just said, we have been victorious over ISIS, we've defeated ISIS, and we are withdrawing our troops. Yay! It's all a lie. It's all, a, it's all a lie. It's all a staged play that we watch coming out of Washington. A drama. A B-rated movie for Americans to watch. They all get caught up in the drama. And meanwhile, we just continue to take over the world. We are the military arm of the United Nations. The New World Order is here. It's manifested. We're living it. And we are the military force of that New World Order. What is behind this pullout of Syria? Don't think it's because we defeated ISIS. We didn't defeat ISIS and you can't defeat your own proxy army. A lot of people are shocked. A uh, shocked decision to pull out U.S. troops. Huge mistake. His de uh, declaration of victory over ISIL. Openly contradicted by the British government, but also by our own government officials. Oh, well, I guess also by... Trump, the Trump administration, unless we were able to uh, defeat ISIS overnight. A junior defense minister from the British government said, I strongly disagree with Mr. Trump's assessment of ISIL's defeat. ISIL has morphed into other forms of extremism, and the threat is very much alive. Even our own Lindsey Graham said, with all due respect, ISIS is not defeated in Syria, Iraq, uh, and after just returning from visiting there, not in Afghanistan, oh, ISIS is all over. Well, Lindsey Graham understands that ISIS was created by us and funded by uh, the United States and, and Israel and Saudi Arabia and Britain. Uh, it is our proxy army. Okay, um, everything's a lie. How do you like living in the people of the lie, the country, the people of the lie? Somebody left me a comment a couple of days ago dismissing everything that I said that I was feeling and decided for himself what I was going through. And that decision was that I was on overload with too much information. And I needed to take a break. Oh, it's not the information that has overloaded my brain. It's the saturation of lies that are now in full force hitting us every which way. Um, and it's not just coming from mainstream media or our government officials. Personally, having to deal with everybody lying, nobody taking responsibility for their lies, they creating a lot of pain and confusion in your own personal life and then you also have to deal with what's happening with us collectively. I feel so saturated in lies now that it, it does render you very confused, overwhelmed, and how do you address all of this? And then of course we have the Trump supporters who uh, still are supporting this guy 
and no doubt they'll say, see Carol, he is withdrawing from Syria. The lies are also coming from YouTubers that have been a real shock. You know, earlier this year, I hear from one that I really respected claim that Trump had ordered the CIA out of Syria with no evidence. That's what people are saying. And all of my research shows that they must be lying because there's no evidence for anybody to have said that. Um, but we have so many who just follow what someone else says. So they hear that and they've got huge numbers of subscribers. They're all also just part of the lie and they can't seem to get themselves out of it. This is very upsetting. So you read this here, the White House, their statement, the U.S. has defeated the territorial caliphate and started returning the United States troops home as we transition to the next phase of this campaign. It's a campaign. I thought it was our humanitarian efforts. You know, the bombing of Syria to protect Syrians from their crazy dictator, Assad, who was killing them with chemical weapons. We had no evidence of that, but... We will bomb. Anyway, um, you know, that Americans actually believe this horseshit about these humanitarian efforts. Talk about naive children wanting to believe daddy and mommy. But here we have next. These victories over ISIS in Syria do not signal the end of the global coalition or its campaign. What's the campaign? We don't know. The campaign, I guess, is to fight ISIS. But then it became Russia, Iran. What are we going to do about Russia and Iran's presence in Syria? I guess we defeated them too. Even Lindsey Graham states, you know, yeah, it's, it's, we're still there. But Lindsey knows. All right. I, I, I just remembered that I stated that. But the decision is likely to frustrate Israel, who saw the U.S. presence in Syria as a way of counterbalancing Iran's own deployment in the country. Do you actually believe that this guy is going against Israel? That this guy is going to frustrate Israel? You'll see, but unfortunately all we can do is speculate, that we may be going into Central America now, and Israel has their own interest in Central America. So, watching the great liars who don't give a shit what you think about them, think you are an abject fool for applauding them, supporting them, and it's unfortunate because all agendas continue full steam ahead. The New World Order only cementing itself more so around the globe. Oh, don't leave me a comment that I'm a disinformation agent because I said the word globe. So yes, ISIS is in Syria. Trump lies and says we defeated ISIS, but it doesn't matter because Americans will just accept anything. Not everyone, not you guys, not me, but most. So this October 16 of this year, Trump administration has new plan to drive uh, uh, Iran out of Syria. Well, Iran, the access of evil, Iran, oh my God. Iran, North Korea, they're going to destroy American cities. They're going to drop a bomb on us. Iran, they cannot get a nuclear uh, bomb. We have to stop them. We've got to stop them. And they're in Syria. So 
The administration, of course, because Iran is our mortal enemy. They want to kill us. So a new plan was devised October 2018 to drive Iran out of Syria. Well, yeah, in November, just a few weeks ago, Trump administration, are they pivoting the fight in Syria toward a war with Iran? Just a couple of weeks ago, I guess we won that war with Iran. Iran's out of Syria, and now we can pull out. The horseshit coming out of our government, out, out, out of our POTUS, is just phenomenal, and it is really maddening to see how many Americans are still so stuck in this disgusting staged play that goes on here in our country. In America's hidden war in Syria, troops face peril on many fronts. When was this posted? Oh, five days ago. It lies at the heart of the United States' newest commitment to a Middle East war. Oh, wow, five days ago. Okay, overnight. Suddenly, we've defeated ISIS. Can you not see through any of this? Does this not beg questions in your mind? At least, at least, does it not beg questions? Five days ago, President Donald Trump indicated in March that the troops would be brought home once the battle is won. The latest military push to eject the group from its final pocket of territory recently got underway. That was five days ago. So it recently got underway. I guess they pushed them out immediately. Wow, what a success. We are so exceptional. It's amazing. USA, USA, USA. Too bad we couldn't do that kind of, um, you know, success in Syria years ago. Many people would not have had their lives destroyed. But how, okay, in September, the administration switched course, saying the troops will stay in Syria, pending an overall settlement to the Syrian war, and with a new mission to act as a bulwark against Iran's expanding influence. This was posted five days ago, and that was in September, not too long ago. So we were staying in Syria because we had to make sure that Iran's expanding influence didn't expand anymore. And, well, it was necessary to get Iran out of Syria and Israel complaining Iran's in Syria. And they're going to kill, um, kill off Israelis and destroy the country. And, oh, my God, we've got to stay oh, now. And we are now leaving. Decision puts U.S. troops in overall control, perhaps indefinitely, of an area comprising nearly a third of Syria. I've posted videos on the United States, their military bases in Syria. Uh, it has been long known that we don't go into countries and leave them. We stay Iraq. We bomb the hell out of Iraq. And then we built the biggest military base ever in Iraq. Really? Did we have plans to leave Iraq after we built the biggest military base ever? No, of course not. But Americans, well, <laughs> I guess they love their lies and they want to feel as if they are exceptional and morally superior to anybody else in the world, no matter how much evidence comes, comes like a flash flood towards them that we are so not. They just like that idea. The number of troops. How many times did we hear? We will not have ground troops in Syria. Obama said it when we had ground troops already deployed in Syria. He lied through his teeth. But what do we do? We just accept what these liars tell us. Unbelievable. Trump said the same thing. No ground troops in Syria. Well, we had ground troops in Syria. You know, this is what <laughs> really is remarkably twisted and sick. It's sick. But ordinary Americans do this. 
They do it. I've had them in my life. They just say the most outrageous lies and they expect you to just accept it. If you don't accept it and then get upset about it, you're considered the problem. The numbers from 503 or 2,000 or 4,000 Special Operations Forces in Syria. All right. Four days ago, U.S. media claims that American citizens have been tortured, or an American citizen has been tortured, then executed by the Syrian government. Washington Post came out with this article accusing the Syrian government of detaining, torturing, and then executing an American citizen, Leila Shuikani, Shuikani, I'm sorry for mispronouncing her name, but we don't even know, really, if she's dead. Uh, you'd have to do research to find out if she's actually a real person. Um, the factual basis of this claim was not provided in the Washington Post, Testimony was given by James Jeffrey, the U.S. Special Envoy for Syria engagement. And he testified to the same thing to our U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee. U.S. Special Envoy for Syria engagement, Trump administration. Jeffries says this. Jeffrey said this. Okay. Um, and the op-ed in the Washington Post said, Unless we begin to demand answers for the detention and death of Americans around the world, I don't see any incentive for Assad or other thugs to stop targeting our citizens. That was four days ago. Four days ago, we had someone in the Trump administration claim that Assad, his government, detained, tortured, and executed an American citizen. But we're pulling out of Syria? Do you see that there's something wrong with this picture? Trump comes into office. We use that bullshit claim again. Assad used chemical weapons against his own citizens. Trump doesn't wait for evidence. He bombs Syria to protect the Syrians from that crazy lunatic, Assad. So I guess Trump cares more about Syrians than he does Americans. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, four days ago, U.S. citizen believed executed in Syrian prison heightens fears for others. If we just allow Assad to detain and torture and execute one American citizen, then he's going to be torturing and killing more American citizens. So Trump... What you going to do about it? I'm going to declare that we have been victorious over ISIS and I'm pulling our troops out. So, yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. It's sad. It's really sad. Open-ended military presence in Syria. There will be an open-ended military presence in Syria despite this lying, crazy person in the White House claiming we are getting out of Syria. Obama did the same thing. We're getting out of Iraq. And we didn't get out of Iraq. This, the end of September, another senior advisor for Syria, Middle East, North Africa, she testified. September 27, House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee. Okie dokie, well, what does she claim? Syria's multifaceted and its regional, if not global, reverberations continue to pose a significant challenge to U.S. strategic interests. Yes, strategic interests. Oh, perhaps not humanitarian efforts. Syria's brutal conflict is entering its most dangerous phase with significant geostrategic and humanitarian consequences. But what does she say about Iran? Iran, the axis of evil, 
we've got to stop Iran. They want to destroy um, Israel and they want to kill Americans. Tehran has supported Assad with troops, weapons, funding. They mobilized a fighting force of 25,000 from Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Lebanon, uh, thousands of Hezbollah fighters. Uh, they've deployed those fighters to nearly 40 facilities across Syria, but we're pulling out. I guess Israel is no longer concerned. <laughs> dokey. Very good article. Thank you to the subscriber who sent this along to me. The United States are preparing a war between Latin American states. I learned some information. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, when we cease those creating wars, and I'm not going to say if, if they must cease creating wars in the greater Middle East, they'll just turn around and flame the Caribbean basin. Well, I don't think we're going to cease any wars in the greater Middle East. And the ceasing of those wars will be when our troops have complete control over those countries. And we're nearly at it. We have nearly achieved that. But the Pentagon is planning to assassinate an elected head of state, ruin his country, and undermine the uni unity of Latin America. John Bolton, who was appointed by Trump, looked at Trump's appointments. Virtually every head of our federal agency, those appointments by Trump, are following the dictates of the United Nations and they are implementing Agenda 2030 throughout the country. Uh, his cabinet, many are the Goldman Sachs appointees that every president appoints. Not the same people, but people that are Goldman Sachs employees the bankers, and he has brought back the neocons. So this uh, national security advisor to Trump, John Bolton, has relaunched the Pentagon's project for the destruction of the state structures in the Caribbean basin. After 9-11, Donald Rumsfeld, another evil psychopathic nut job, he created the Office of Force Transformation. Force Transformation. The forcing the transformation of other countries. And nominated Admiral Arthur Shabrowski. I don't even know if that's the correct pronunciation of his name. But he was the director of this Office of Force Transformation. And the mission was to train the U.S. Army for its new role in the era of financial globalization. It was designed to change military culture in order to destroy the state structures of the regions which were not connected to the global economy. The first chapter, the greater Middle East, was to be destroyed. The second stage, the Caribbean Basin. The plan? to destroy some 20 coastal and insular states with the exception of Colombia, Mexico, and those territories of the United States, UK, France, Holland. Uh, now, here, President Donald Trump opposed this uh, Jabrowski or Shabrowski or Jabrowski plan. See, Carol, he is fighting the deep state. I don't see anything. I don't believe liars. This guy has been lying. He's a known liar. How do you believe liars? Do you not understand that President Trump, he didn't just make his way into that White House when we've been selecting presidents for decades? When we, uh, the deep state, has been selecting presidents, and suddenly this, wow, this strategic chess player just made his way into the White House? Are you kidding me? Okay, well, uh, no. And 
what these presidents do is lie to their base. See, I'm doing all I can to rein in the military. I'm doing what I can to stop, to fight the deep state, to get them out of America. Boy, it's, look, the new world order's here. Guys, sweethearts, it's here. It's gone. The United States of America, it was gone a really long time ago, but we don't have, it's all an illusion that you are watching and living. You live deluded in an illusion that we still are the United States of America. We're not. Donald Trump is the CEO of the United States Corporation, and that corporation is the military force of the one world government. That's why it's all over, all over the world with all of its military bases. And that's why it is going to regions around the world destroying countries. All right, so uh, Admiral Kurt Tid. It was revealed. A note from Admiral Kurt Tid, Commander-in-Chief of Southcom, exposing the operations aimed at Venezuela. We've got these Americans who say, see, socialism doesn't work. Look, I'm not saying it does. All I'm saying is they believe that horseshit that comes from mainstream media. Socialism. Look, look, it's uh, destroyed Venezuela. It's not socialism. It's the CIA, the NSA, uh, the United States military and U.S. government trying to take over Venezuela for decades and... Well, they may very well be getting ready to start wars in Latin America. We know that Russia is already there. So is this declaration that we are victorious with ISIS and we're pulling out of Syria to relocate those troops in Latin America? It could be. Um, so... Here, this group who did the analysis, they have concluded that the destabilization of Venezuela, beginning with the uh, Kirimbas, oh God, I'm so sorry for not being able to pronounce much of anything anymore. That movement, um, the continued attempts, uh, coup d'etat attempts, and those were going on for decades to get rid of Hugo Chavez and even, you know, Hugo Chavez as he was the head of Venezuela he brought about fantastic economic and political changes to Venezuela that's why I believe that they targeted him with cancer they induced the cancer to kill him off. Now they're trying to get rid of Maduro. Um, all right. Then the, the attacks on the national currency, the organization of immigration led from Brazil, Colombia, Guyana, Guyana, multinational maneuvers of troop transport, were organized by the United States and their allies in August 2017 during the Trump years. And this was made possible by the election of pro-Israeli President Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro, who will come to power in Brazil January 2019. All right. The destabilization of countries throughout the world have been the intent of our military, CIA, NSA, for decades, and it has not stopped. The focus first was the Middle East. Now they are refocusing their efforts on Latin America. 
and they have an awful lot of support in Central American countries. Uh, the next vice president of Brazil, whose father played an important role in the pro-U.S. military coup in 1964, made himself famous by his declarations against President Lula and Rousseff. They have been brought down. They apparently, well, you're not good for the New World Order. You gotta go. Um, 2017, this guy declared on behalf of the Grand Orient of Brazil that the time for a new military coup had arrived. And he announced an impending overthrow of the Venezuelan president, Maduro, and the deployment of a Brazilian peace force. Um, it constitutes a violation of the United States, not, uh, United Nations Charter, but who cares? The United Nations, as long as your violations are in accord with our dictates, you ain't violating anything. Um, so the, uh, the elected president, Bolsonaro, declared that no one had any intention of going to war with anyone and that his vice president, he talked too much. Well, we'll see if that president reigns in his vice president. But President Maduro, on December 12, that was just a few days ago, revealed that the U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton was handling the coordination between the teams of Colombian president and the Brazilian vice president. A group of 734 mercenaries is currently being trained in Colombia uh, in order to perpetrate a false flag attack allegedly by Venezuela against Colombia, thereby justifying a Colombian war against Venezuela. That will be in a theater soon, coming to you soon in a theater near you, a new war. Mercenaries. Those mercenaries are supported by special forces stationed on U.S. military bases in Colombia and Florida. The U.S. plan is to take over from the beginning of the conflict the three Venezuelan military bases. And then they're going to do what they've been doing in Syria. United States taking over country. Russia to come in to save that country. See, Russia good, United States bad. All a stage play to get the masses to believe anything. Oh, Jesus. I, the U.S. National Security Council is attempting to convince various states not to recognize Maduro's second mandate. He's coming back into power uh, at the new year. Uh, the Lima Group has... Uh, they, the Lima Group, uh, which is Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Costa Rica, Chile, Ghana, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Panama, Paraguay, and Peru. A whole lot of countries. This Lima Group decided to not recognize uh, the presidential ballot even before the election took place. The migration kind crisis turns out to just be another manipulation. The Venezuelans who were, who were fleeing their monetary crisis, moving to other Latin American countries um, to find work, well, they're wanting to return to Venezuela. But the Lima Group prevents them from, from doing so, forbidding Venezuelan planes who are attempting to repatriate them to use their airspace and uh, preventing buses uh, to come to their borders to repatriate Venezuelans. Everything is therefore happening as if we were watching a remake of the events which bloodied the greater Middle East after 9-11. The main point is not the military actions but the appearance of disorder that the events present intended to confuse people. And yes, when people lie, you get confused. 
And if you're somebody who cares and you want to figure it out, it gets maddening because all you can do is speculate. But based on watching patterns, you don't really have to, you can, you have to speculate on uh, particulars, but generally, you know what's happening. More countries are going to be squashed by the New World Order's military, the One World Government's military, the United States. So, soon to come, the destruction of more states without anyone complaining. President Trump declared that the time for a regime change was over. He did not imagine that he would be betrayed by his own people. <gasps> oh, he's been betrayed by his own people. See, Carol? He is fighting the deep state. All of these people are betraying him. And he's alone. Fighting for us. When this guy has never given anybody any indication that he cares about anybody but himself. So, John Bolton declared in Miami that Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela formed a troika of tyranny. It's kind of like that axis of evil. Uh, Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, December 1, before the Reagan National Defense Forum that elected, he declared that President Maduro is an irresponsible despot who has to go. This is what is coming shortly. But let's focus on all of the drama coming out of Washington, D.C., unfolding, the never-ending unfolding of a B movie. The tragic comedy, tragic comedy that is never ending. Only possible way to get any of this to stop is for Americans to quit working, stop paying taxes, get the hell out of this matrix completely. Oh, Carol. All links are below. Pipe dreams. Americans love their lives.